Welcome back to my channel guys and I hope you're all doing amazingly well. Today's video is going to be all about my ACCA journey and how I became a qualified chartered accountant. Currently I'm actually working as a finance manager in London but upon qualification I was working as a management accountant for about a year. I qualified under the ACCA qualification and Kaplan was my tuition provider. I qualified about a year and a half ago alongside sharing my journey. I want to give some tips to those who are currently undertaking the qualification and just share the basics for those who are maybe considering taking the ACCA course. I'm going to share some of the resources that I used along the way as well so I hope this video motivates anyone going through the ACCA right now because as intense as it is it is definitely worth it. So the ACCA is the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants and essentially it's a professional body that certifies or accredits professional accountants and financial professionals. The course is ranked at master's level and upon completion you become an ACCA member and of course a qualified chartered accountant. In qualifying or becoming an ACCA member it's more than just having a suffix at the end of your name but it actually certifies you in the accounting and finance profession. The ACCA qualification is recognised worldwide so not just in the UK so upon qualifying you also are able to get your foot in the door for a lot of roles and opportunities across the globe. ACCA qualified students can follow a range of careers in the finance world. You don't just have to pursue accounting. You can choose to pursue a banking career, auditing, consulting, finance. You can even go into taxation or law if you would like. There's so many different routes you can take. You don't have to strictly follow an accounting career. So in order to achieve the ACCA qualification, according to the ACCA website, students have to complete a maximum of 13 exams, depending on prior experience and qualifications. You have to complete an ethics and professional skills module and you also have to evidence three years of practical work experience in a relevant role. So essentially you can complete the qualification in a minimum of three years. Uh, I started the ACCA when I was 22 years old and that was six months after I graduated university. I went to university to study accounting and finance with a year in industry which meant that when I I graduated from university I'd already done one year of placement in an accounting firm and that was in my third year of uni. I already had one year of relevant work experience before I'd even started the ACCA or even started my graduate job. I got a graduate job in industry and they offered me a training contract if I took the role. So that training contract they offered to pay for me to do whatever course I wanted to do and I chose to do the ACCA. The ACCA qualification was more in line with my career aspirations which is why I chose that course. Essentially in the training contract they would cover the whole course there was obviously some conditions in place so for example for me the only condition that was really placed into my training contract was that I had to sit at least two exams a year and if I failed the first exam I would have to cover the cost of all the following attempts for that specific exam until I passed. They cover the cost of everything, my exemptions, subscription fees, membership fees, just everything. My employer also did give me study leave for every single exam. So I believe I had four days. So that was the day of the exam, the day before the exam. And then I got two days of my choosing per exam which I could book off as study leave to prepare and revise for the exam. So as I said, I'd gone to university to study accounting and finance with a year in industry. So I did get quite a few exemptions from university, which meant I did not have to sit seven of the ACCA exams. So as I mentioned before, there were 13 ACCA exams in total. And because I got seven exemptions, for my university course, that meant I only had to sit six exams. I had to sit two exams on the applied skills level and four exams on the professional level. So as I mentioned before, I didn't actually start the ACCA course until I was about six months into my graduate role. That was because the first three months were probation. So basically wasn't permitted for me to sign up to any course up until my probation was complete and I passed. And then I spent the next three months after that just kind of deciding and signing up and stuff like that and just basically selecting what type of tuition I wanted. Initially I chose to do weekend classes so on a Saturday or a Sunday all my in-person classes switched 
to online classes from 2019 because of COVID. Doing the ACCA alongside full-time work was very intense. I often had people in my class who actually had a whole family and were doing this course and working as well. To give insight to those who are considering during this course, I was living with my parents the whole time that I did this course and even still it was a struggle to manage do the ACCA at the same time. The way I managed it was just becoming really really organised and managing my time, making the most out of the facilities and the resources that I had. Like you have limited study leave. So you could use your annual leave, but obviously you want to use your annual leave for actual enjoyment. But for me, I would say the main thing that I did was stay after work for a couple hours and use the meeting rooms to revise. In the office that I used to work in, obviously once the working day is done, I was in the office, in the meeting room specifically, using the whiteboard, using the TV and projecting all my notes and my exam questions, giving myself exam conditions as well so that I could actually get through the question and see how well I do. And one thing is that if your employer has given you a training contract then they're going to support you along the way. It's in their best interest for you to pass as well because they've committed and they've invested in you because they're paying for this. You know, the course isn't cheap. The independent study is so important as you're studying this course. So the weekends were crucial for me. I literally treated it like a nine to five. So I would start at nine, have a lunch break, then continue on until about 5.30 and then I would rest for the evening. I would have the same approach for my study days as well because it means that I don't overkill, you know, burn myself out, but also it makes sure that I get in the necessary required hours in order to feel like I've had a productive day. One thing that I love to use to manage my time was a weekly planner. So when I was studying, I was using a planner like this. This is the planner that I was using. It's called the Smart Planner and I bought this from Amazon. It's undated. So you can basically just get in there and just use it whenever. This is just a planner that I would carry around with me in my bag when I'm going for study sessions in the library or when I'm going into the office. Also at the top, it has these motivational quotes, which was so, for me, I love a good quote. It's just a great thing to see when you're starting your day. I also had another weekly planner, which would be on my desk at home. I just bought one fresh from Amazon. It's a wall and desk planner. So those are the tools that I used to plan out my independent study. I also used a website called Accountancy. It's a really, really good online resource for those of you who want something alongside the resources that your tuition provider has given you. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for those who are interested. I did fail a couple of exams along the way. So I failed two exams, but on the second time round, I passed. When I started this course, I intended to finish it as soon as possible. Like I always told myself, I'm only revising for this once. And if I don't pass it first time, I'm passing second time. I'm just gonna get my head down and soak it in and make sure that I pass this as soon as I can, because I don't wanna be sitting here revising this same material three weeks from now. I did attempt to sit two exams in one sitting and I almost fell down. So I would not recommend that. I struggled to pass both at the same time. I only passed one. So I would not recommend doing that. I also want to make the point that it's okay to fail as long as you learn from that and use it to motivate you moving forward. Obviously, it's in your own best interest to pass quickly. But don't beat yourself up too much if it takes you two times to pass or three times. It does go on your transcript, but you passed at the end of the day. It didn't go against me how many times it took me to pass specific exams. And that's just from my personal experience of my employers and the job applications I've had. That's how I navigated my fails. I just used them to motivate me to pass the next one. And I always did because I told myself I'm never failing this again. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm currently working as a finance manager but when I first got my training contract I was working as a finance assistant and then when I became part qualified I became a finance associate upon qualifying I then became a management accountant 
and I recently became a finance manager after a year of being qualified. So I have had quite a bit of career progression from the inception of this journey up until now. A lot of the things that I come across are things that I've studied during the ACCA. It's something that I'm really, really glad I did. I wouldn't be where I am today in my career if not for the ACCA. So it is very rewarding. It's not an easy course, but if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So for those who are doing this course I would just say stay motivated and I would also recommend study group one great thing about the people that I was doing my modules with is that they would often set up whatsapp groups I'm not usually a fan of whatsapp groups but having them for study and for this course was really beneficial for me certain students would have studied certain modules before me so they were sharing their tips on their side and obviously I would have sat certain exams before other people so yeah it was just really good to get some insight into other people's experiences do drop your experiences down below i'd love to hear from you guys as to whether you are currently studying the acca doing another qualification considering this qualification let me know where you are on your journey down in the comment section below if you do like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe and i will do more videos like this in future thank you again for watching and i will catch you all in my next video